Beef in the Spotlight. We're checking out Cattlemen's Classic. We'll have more on the state of the beef industry and check out the events going on this year at the Classic. Plus, more than cows, sows, and plows, we celebrate FFA Week. And go one-on-one -on -one with Governor Ricketts. It's time to grow. Breeders and buyers together, Cattlemen's Classic has wrapped up. But how is the beef industry doing? And TV's Jessica Stevenson has our top story. Vegas Bulls coming in on top, lot eight. Shaper. As a buyer, you would contact me and tell me what you're looking for. As a seller, you would contact me and tell me what you have. And then I try and bring those two entities together. Art has been a broker for many years. And that's a really, really high quality type of purebred. Food. He says the marketing industry has drastically evolved over the past decade. <laughs> now internet marketing and video sales are popular. More and more livestock is being marketed uh, via that means with several companies that uh, put on large sales offering many thousands of head of cattle on a particular day and uh, it provides the buyer the opportunity to select what he wants from anywhere across the country. Art has been coming to the classics since the beginning. He says shows like this are very helpful for brokers like him. Events like Nebraska Cattlemen's Classic uh, bring together the producers from various different states and different areas uh, the people that consign their cattle here to sell in these sales uh, allows them or provides them with the opportunity to show their cattle to new prospective buyers and also to compare them with their, their friends. He says this is especially important as cattle breeds continue to evolve. We're never satisfied with what we have. We think we create the perfect one and then we change our mind and tomorrow we want something different. And uh, it's uh, another, events like this again provide that because different people, different producers bring different types of animals to these sales. Beef is Nebraska's number one industry. Governor Pete Ricketts says cattlemen need tax relief and he thinks he's come up with a solution that brings rural and urban together. Bulls and heifers head to the sale block, but Cattlemen's Classic is much more than a livestock auction. Ranchers talk shop, and as the governor visits, he tells them about his dual approach to tax relief. We don't have enough to be able to pass a bill by itself on property tax relief. But if we build a coalition with rural centers who are interested in property tax relief and urban centers who are in interested in income tax relief, we can perhaps build enough of a coalition to be able to get past a potential filibuster. Groups like the cattlemen have been working with the governor. I think the governor understands uh, this property tax issue very, very well. Some say the governor's plan doesn't go far enough. Farm Bureau wants to expand the sales tax with money going to schools to offset property taxes. And it just doesn't make sense to be able to think you're going to lower taxes by raising taxes. The governor says tax relief starts by controlling spending. Our farmers and ranchers are tightening their belts because they see their farm income go down. That's what our local entities have to do as well. On property taxes, the governor's bill would factor the income potential of farmland. Troy Stillwalter says it's an interesting concept as they wait to see what comes through the legislature. Where we've got a whole bundle of bills they'll involve into one or two. And, and hopefully we have uh, meaningful property tax reform. The number of farms in the state is on the decline, but the number of kids involved in FFA has never been higher. Here's a look back at FFA week. Wearing the blue corduroy jacket, FFA kids are used to the comments. Well, all the time they're like, oh, FFA, that's just agriculture. But as a trip to Calvin's Classic shows, agriculture is broader than many realize. FFA is not only farming and ranching, there's so many different parts to FFA. I'm going to talk to you about more than an after school club. It's integrated into the curriculum. 176 Nebraska schools offer these courses. More than 13,000 kids in the state will take an egg class this year and 8,004 are members of FFA, an all time high. 
you know, FFA is a broad band of educational opportunities for our youth. The manager of Cattlemen's Classic would love to see some kids get involved in raising livestock, but egg classes could also lead to careers in biotechnology, forestry, even using drones to scout crops. There's banking, there's feed opportunities, there's sales. It's not just the production side. And Events like this open their eyes. When we come to these, it's definitely awesome to be able to talk to people in that career so you can see, oh, maybe I'm interested in ag sales. That's something you could talk to someone whose their job is ag sales. But kids really don't know what they want to go into. Maybe some insight on what those business professionals do on a daily basis could steer them in the right direction. More than future farmers, they're future scientists, salespeople, and leaders in their communities. More on Cattleman's Classic later in the show. Now on to the wild weather from 70 degree days to snow. Joe Mazur of DeWeese sends us this video as he tried to herd cattle in the snow Friday. Winds gusting up to 45 miles an hour in that area. The wind chill as low as 4 degrees and visibility less than a quarter of a mile there in Clay County. Despite those conditions, Joe says, out there taking cattle, a rancher's job never done. And what a change in weather it's been before the snow, that stretch of 70 degree days. The wheat is starting to break ground in rural Phelps County thanks to the warm up. Extension agents say it's trying to begin the process of photosynthesis earlier than normal. They say while plants can go in and out of dormancy throughout the winter, dramatic changes in temperatures can make a big difference to that winter wheat. It's when we get into those uh, teen temperatures or in those 20s, uh, when we've been at an extreme uh, warm temperature, that could cause a problem. Now, later on development, then those temperatures could be a problem as the plants get bigger. But when they're still small and in the tillering area, uh, those type of temperature scenarios shouldn't be a, a big problem. Extension educator Todd Whitney urges farmers to be patient. On to the national scene where President Trump pledges his support for ethanol. The president sent a letter to the National Ethanol Conference reiterating his support of renewable energy and ethanol. In the letter, Trump also said his administration is working on cutting regulatory burdens. But local farmers do have concerns about the new president's train policies, with some fearing it could result in a trade war with Mexico, and that could hurt Nebraska's corn growers. And TV's Valerie Juarez has more. Exports are very important for Nebraska agriculture. Amid recent politics and tensions with Mexico, President Donald Trump has talked about renegotiating the North American Free Trade Agreement or simply getting rid of it. But what does that mean for farmers? Any time that there's tariffs uh, against you, why it, it hurts the amount of product that you can export. However, Mexico may already be looking into trading some commodities with other countries. Mexico is so close to us that it's really uh, really to both sides' advantage to, to trade, uh, trade corn or whatever the commodity is. Senator Ben Sass warns the Trump administration that Mexico is one of the biggest importers of Nebraska corn. We have around 17 percent or so of, uh, of Nebraska corn that is exported to uh, Mexico. We Another local farmer says the state's economy, which thrives mostly from ag, has been on the decline and many are worried. A number of us in the agricultural industry are a little concerned with President Trump's uh, statements on trade. In the letter to the president, Senator Sass calls Mexico a value trade partner. But what are local farmers hoping for next? We want to increase our trade. We would like to have free and open trade of agricultural products throughout the world. For NTV News, I am Valerie Juarez. Now to the results of our poll question. What impact do you think the president's policies will have on trade as it relates to agriculture? The results are very split. Positive, negative, neutral, unsure, all splitting the vote as we'll have to take a wait and see approach to see what it means. We'll go one on one with the governor coming up next, but first, let's hear from some FFA kids. I'm Ebony Anderson from Gothenburg, and I love FFA because you make connections with people all across this nation. Hi, I'm Dylan Gilming from the Elm Creek FFA chapter, and I love FFA because of the learning opportunities it has given me. 